Okay, Chiron. Well, why is he so important? First of all, he is the only uh, celestial body that covers the important human life span of 50 years. And I dare to say it's the new midlife crisis. Um, we have been working with the midlife crisis as shown by Uranus in the age of 42, when we have Uranus half around the chart. But I think as we're all um, staying so much younger as we're getting older, <laughs> 50 is the new 40, and um, whereas um, in former times people were starting when they were, got 30 and then when they got around 40 that they thought they were really old. Nowadays it's more the 50 that is like you start to experience the feeling of, hmm, I've been living 50 years now, um, That's prob I'm probably at least at half of it. <laughs> and from now on the countdown ca counts backwards. So. It is a big transition in human's life, and we tend to make a big deal around the 50th birthday. So that goes with Chiron. And for all of the women between us, it's also the time when we enter the menopause around 50, sometimes a couple of years earlier or later, but that's the time when we enter the stage of the sage woman, which is also a very interesting new uh, stage of life. So that is also displayed display, by Chiron in the chart. And yes, for me, he's very important because he's on the MC of my chart. <laughs> and I will uh, tell you more about that in a minute. He's also the builder of bridges because he moves between Saturn and Uranus. And the interesting thing is that his his um, orbit is a little bit erratic because, you know, at times he gets drawn into um, the gravity of Saturn, which makes him faster. And then when he's in the orbit of Uranus, he is slower. And that is why he has a very eccentric, um, you know, way of staying in the science. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, also, I would say Chiron is one of us because Chiron is um, the one that is in a way the outsider, but yet being so important. And she stands for the people that have chosen a very, very special path in life. And uh, when I did research on a video on Chiron that I did um, last year, no, it was 2018, Chiron, the inner healer, I did research, um, and you know, you know that in Germany we have a big and rich um, astrology scene, and we have done a lot of research on Chiron. And I found an article where uh, one person has described uh, Chiron or the people with a strong Chiron as the agents of evolution, meaning that these are people, as I said before, who are devoting their lives and their works to the better of mankind and our planet. And um, so, you know, I learned to see Chiron as the Saint Patron of the agents of evolution, which I really like. <laughs> okay, some astronomical data. Chiron is a planetoid or a comet. He has signatures for both, which again shows him as being somebody who is between worlds his orbit, 50 years, as we discussed, and his uh, the time he spends in each sign is very different. It's between two and seven years, depending on its orbital position. And currently, Chiron is moving through Aries. He's around eight degrees of Aries now, and he's now m traveling at the speed of seven years a sign, and he even spent almost eight years in the sign of Pisces. And here you see his... Uh, <laughs> his eccentric orbit that is between, sometimes it cuts inside of Saturn and sometimes it's outside of Saturn and, and more closer to Uranus. So um, the astrologers of Germany, some of them claim that uh, one should see Chiron as the new ruler of Virgo. This is why I put up the sign of Virgo next to the symbol of the key of Chiron. So some of us astrologers work um, successfully with the idea that the ruler of 
Virgo is more Chiron than Mercury. Um, I tend to try to have both in my eye. I mean, I still think um, Virgos have a lot of Mercury power, but I think it's an interesting concept and it's worthwhile to pursue it and you know work with it a little bit and try it, how it works. In the mythology, um, Chiron was a centaur, half horse, half man, and he is, by the way, the son of Titan Kronos, that is Saturn in the Greek mythology, and a nymph called Philera or Philyra, yeah, Philyra. And because he was uh, a born uh, from an unfaithful affair, <laughs> uh, and Saturn had taken, had transformed into a stallion to mate with uh, the nymph. And that is why poor Chiron became half horse and half man. And when, when his mother gave birth to him, she was shocked and she abandoned him right away. So he became an orphan and then he later he was adopted and educated by the sun god Apollon. And here again, you see he's a, a walker, a wanderer between worlds. And one of the Chiron themes is um, there's there's no place where he really belongs to because being a centaur he was part of this very wild group the centaurs were uh, known as a bunch of really wild animals have man have animals and they you know they were um, drinking and raping women and I mean they were really bad but he was half god and had been educated by Apollon that made him not really being a centaur like the others so again we have this this idea of not belonging to any of the groups. And then later he became teacher, coach, and healer of the young gods, the, the sons of the gods, um, took lessons in you know, um, martial arts. And also when somebody got wounded, he knew how to heal the wounds. And then something really tragic happened. Um, he had mixed a poison for an arrow for one of his uh, students, and I think that student was uh, Hercules. And in that fight, Hercules accidentally um, wounded Chiron, and this poison that was on that arrow uh, made the wound never heal. And so Chiron had been wounded with his own arrow or with his own poison, and he could never heal. And then later he, he, um, he was seeking for, you know, getting released from it. And so he went, uh, yeah, uh, Zeus uh, condemned, had condemned Pr Prometheus, you know, the one who brought the fire to the mankind. And he had chained him to a rock and the eagle would eat his liver every day that was growing back. And so Chiron later went ahead and yeah, and Zeus had said, only somebody who takes his place can release Prometheus from his torture. So after a long time of being wounded and the wound could never heal, uh, Chiron went ahead and said, I'll, I volunteer to take the place of Prometheus to release him. And then Zeus was so impressed by this gesture that he said, okay, I'm taking, I'm, ta I'm gonna free Prometheus and I'm gonna take your um, offer, but I'm not gonna change you to the, uh, to the rock. I'm gonna give you a star sign in the sky, the sign of the centaur. So that's the mythology. So the theme is, of course, the, the Chiron theme in astrology is that Chiron represents the wound of wisdom that we have in us and through which we discover our true strengths and talents. That's our sore spot or our weak spot. And the lesson of Chiron is accepting our weaknesses and by that understanding the weakness of other people and by that in the end becoming a wise healer because one can feel how others feel or even more than that sometimes by having a wound it could be a psychological wound but really also disease you end up becoming somebody special who you would not be without this uh, failure or without this flaw so it's also um, Chiron is also a lot about self-denial or self-control, meaning that you, you know, grow beyond your ego and grow beyond your needs. And it's also, um, it will humble, it will humble a person. 